Hello and welcome back to another video. This time it's going to be about Diablo 3, which is a little bit of a move away from the norm, but actually the new patch is kind of interesting. So if you don't know, the pre-patch for Reaper of Souls just came out today, and there are a number, well, yesterday by the time of this video, and there are a number of changes and things like that which pave the way for the new expansion, but they also refine a lot of the pre-existing gameplay systems, and the patch adds some new things, and overall, it feels like, at least system-wise, there's a, definitely a fresh, a coat of fresh new paint on the entire game. So, first of all, I'm just going to cover the changes, then I'll have a bit of a talk about what I think about them, and how the game just sort of plays. So I suppose most importantly, we have Loot 2.0. This is their new loot system, it completely replaces the old, and frankly a bit shit one that they used to have. And, uh, yeah, so... Let's uh, just list our way down the bullet points. First of all, legendary items are now going to be bind on account, which is rather nice. And um, of course, with the auction house going, it, it is just handy for sending it between your different characters. Then loot is actually going to be biased towards the class which you are currently playing. So this means that you will have a greater chance of getting better gear for the character that you're currently playing, which I think is a really nice change because it was just so annoying when you would, I don't know, play a demon hunter and get loads of barbarian gear. So next, class-specific items will no longer roll uh, stats that are useless to that class, which is, again, very reasonable. And then they are, uh, they, yeah, they've also added some new affixes, so we have things like splash damage, cooldown reduc uh, reductions, a percentage boost of physical damage, and then some other class-specific things. They've also split up stats into primary and secondary. I'm not too sure what the exact implication of that is, but I'm sure it means something. And then they've also changed the stat ranges on gear. So instead of a chest having a chance between, let's just say, 15 and 200 dexterity, it will now have a range of 140 to 200. Just in the, as an example. But that means that the chance of getting an utterly awful piece of gear is greatly reduced, which is quite good. Then they have also updated all of the legendary items in the game to reflect all of these different changes. And actually, interestingly enough, um, I'm, I'm not really sure if this is true or not, but a lot of the gear that I was finding just in my initial few runs on Master Difficulty, they, they were better than the stuff that I previously had, and the stuff I had was really pretty decent. It was a Monster Power 2 build. So, yeah, I, I don't know. Maybe it's just that I got lucky, or loot on average is going to be a little bit better moving forward. And then I'm also pretty sure that the game is currently dropping less items, but with a greater chance of those items being useful. That was one of their core things, because they didn't like how in the old Diablo 3 looting system, you would just have like 30 yellow items drop and none of them be any good, which was awful, really. It wasn't that much fun. It was more just a constant disappointment than anything else. So overall, loot 2.0 uh, seems to be quite the good thing. Next, Paragon levels have been tweaked a little bit. They are now account-wide, and the cap on your maximum amount of levels is now gone. But you do gain the levels faster, which is quite nice. I definitely noticed that while I was playing. Then you can also spend the points that you get from leveling up into these different categories, which are Core, Offense, Defense, and Utility. So these will do things like give you more health, a bit of damage mitigation, um, some resource cooldown-related things, just various class-related interesting cool shit. It, it's honestly quite nice. Then they've also basically redone the difficulty system. So instead of normal, nightmare, hell, inferno, and then monster power 1 through 10, we now have normal, hard, expert, master, and then torment 1 through 6. And I'm pretty sure the master is roughly about the same as inferno, monster power 1 or 2. Ish. Each subsequent level of torment will give you a higher magic find and gold find, but it will make mobs quite a bit more powerful. And then, of course, the enemies, this is the really cool bit, the enemies will scale with your, the player's level, meaning that you do not have to advance through all of the previous difficulties like you previously had to. Now, I know that to unlock Master, you do need to defeat Expert, which makes sense, but it, it's not as bad as having to complete the game in Normal, then a Nightmare, then on Hell, and then you get to Inferno. So overall, that seems quite reasonable. Next, monsters have been tweaked a little bit, um, there are just some various things like adding in new fixes, re reworking some old ones, that kind of thing, and yeah, whatever, it works out quite well. 
Then the pools of reflection have been added. Now, this is kind of cool. These are a little bit like the health point pools, just that when you collect it, you will get a 25% XP boost for a certain number of experience. You see it as being a little bit like the rest of the bonus in World of Warcraft, and then collecting additional ones of these will give you a longer boost. And then, of course, dying removes it. So it really does incentivize survival, which I think is really cool, actually. They've also added in a thing called Nephilim Glory. Nephilim Glory is basically, throughout gameplay, when you kill enemies, they can drop these yellow power orbs, and you pick up one of these orbs, and then you get the Nephilim Glory buff. This will cause you to do some additional damage and then move a bit faster, and it stacks up to three times. You can then prolong the duration of Nephilim Glory by picking up subsequent health drops. So this just gives this like nice little um, incentive to be fast and kind of move forward, and I think it's quite fun. Then events have also been reworked. So there used to be a whole bunch of random little events in the world, like, uh, let's just say for an example, when you're in Leoric's dungeons, there's a guy who's stuck in an Iron Maiden, you get him out of the thing, and then that, that's fine, nothing really happens. Well, now with this patch, that will spawn a boss, and you can fight the boss, and you get a chance of some loot, which is very cool. And then you also will get a rather sizable amount of XP and gold, so about 20,000 gold, and I think it was about one and a bit million experience. So overall, that was quite nice, and it definitely makes the events a bit more meaningful. Then crafting has also been tweaked around a little bit. Materials have been condensed into two tiers, which are level 1 through 60, and then 61 through 70. This should clear up any bag space, um, well, it should clear up your bag space nicely, and just be a more of a simple system, which is quite good. Also, crafted items will now roll stats based on the new loot 2.0 smart drop system so if you are playing a demon hunter and you're making some demon hunter gear from your blacksmith then the chances are that that gear will be tailored to a demon hunter which is quite good then they have also unlocked this 120 person clan feature I'm not exactly sure what it entails it's not really something that affects me too much but overall pretty cool and uh, yeah let's just talk about what i what i thought so first of all loot 2.0 is far far better and well that's just my impression from the first few hours of playing the patch, it fixes a lot of problems with the vanilla game, and really it fixes the largest problems, especially that reduction in the range for stat rolls. It was always really annoying in original Diablo 3 when you get a legendary, and then it would just have a terrible roll. And that was just such a common occurrence in Diablo 3, because if you have, um, I don't know, something with a range between 1 and 250, most of the time, that's going to be a shit piece of gear. Well, with loot 2.0, most of the time, that's going to be at least a highly usable piece of gear, which is great, and it just, it means that when you do get a, a bit of good luck, it actually is good luck, you have got yourself a legendary, and that's great, you can be happy, you don't have to then be 9 times out of 10 completely disappointed by a terrible and punishing stat rule of, over which you have no real control. So that's definitely very good. Now another thing that I've heard is, um, some people say the legendaries will drop more often, not particularly sure on that, I did get a set helm of Butcher, so perhaps that is true. And um, so, yeah, this is pretty good. Another problem with original Diablo 3 is how 95% of all the gear you got was utter crap. This system certainly seems to fix that. And then, I think another problem is that there was also, um... Like, there was no bias in the old game towards what class you were currently playing, so... If you played a Barbarian, you could be getting wizard gear, and that could be useless to you, and maybe because you haven't played a wizard that much, you don't know how to identify what is a good piece of gear for a wizard. Therefore, it may as well just be a completely pointless drop. So that problem is now at least greatly reduced, which is very good. So, uh, yeah, overall, my thoughts on Loot 2.0 are really, really positive. I think it does fix a lot of the major problems that I had with the old loot system. And I guess just in combination with the, the killing off of the auction house, it should pave the way for the game just being a lot more fun and being a traditional dungeon crawler where you go through the dungeons, you kill things, you get a bit of loot, you stick it on, chances are the loot would be pretty good and you can just leave and be happy, instead of having to deal with lots of crap, auction houses, gold, real money, real money for gold, and all the various problems that original D3 had. Then also this Nephilim Glory mechanic's quite fun, and it does put this like really nice emphasis on survival while maintaining a fast pace. It's, it's weird, it just kinda it keeps on prodding you on to just go a little bit faster and pull an extra pack of mobs in the hope that you can increase the duration of the buff. So I think that's definitely a nice little move, and it adds a bit more pacing to the minute-to-minute -minute gameplay, which is quite a nice feature. Then also the difficulty levels are pretty good. 
I'm glad that you don't have to play the game in every subsequent difficulty first. And though, of course, to unlock Master, you do need to beat the game on Expert, which really d does make a decent degree of sense. Having to normal Hell and uh, Nightmare was just a pain in the arse and a massive chore, so I think it's, it's fairly well done. Another nice thing is that they are very forthright with telling you all the different, uh, well, all the different differences between the various difficulty levels. They flat out tell you the differences in Magic Find, Gold Find, Monster Health, Monster Damage, all those various things. Which is great, because you can, I don't know, just nice, easy information that you can access. Then another thing that they've done with difficulty levels actually is, um, say if you were playing on a difficulty that was really just a little bit too hard, then you could move down difficulty level in-game. You can't move up in-game, but you can move down. So the cool thing about this is that it gives you a little bit of choice. A good example is, a while back in this, actually some of the footage you're seeing in the background of this video, I was going through Act 1 on, I think it was Torment Level 1, and honestly, it was all pretty easy up until Butcher. It turned out I just didn't have enough DPS to kill Butcher in time. Not particularly sure why, perhaps the specific build I was using wasn't really as powerful as it used to be, whatever. But I was just able to drop down the difficulty and kill Butcher, so I didn't really have my time wasted. And I got one of the Natalia's Helms, and it was a very good one as well, so I was quite happy about that. Overall though, yeah, the, the new damage system definitely does make a good bit of sense. Uh, so that's good. Then next, the events, I think it's great because these really do break up the gameplay and add a decent bit of reward to that game system, which beforehand was completely pointless. Those events were not really worth bothering with at all, but now they are, and that's really great. Next, the Paragon levels are far faster than before, and I'm happy that your progress actually feels a little bit more tangible than it used to be, and the way that it's shared between characters is also a nice bonus. So that's really it for the patch 2.0.1 stuff. There are, of course, a bunch of new features like the adventure modes that are coming out in Reaper of Souls, but the one thing I've got to say is, between people saying that Reaper of Souls feels a bit more like Diablo 2 and the positive vibes that this patch has given me, I'm thinking, you know what, maybe I'm going to enjoy Reaper of Souls a bit more than I thought I would, because honestly, I wasn't holding a great deal of hope for it. I thought, yeah, it'll be really solid, um, I'll, you know, I'll definitely buy it, I'll play it for maybe one or two runs, but then, ultimately, I'll just kind of stop. And now I just think that perhaps I'm looking forward to it a bit more than I used to. Which is definitely good. Anyway, regardless, this patch is, of course, completely free. And it does bring a whole bunch of cool changes and things that you can tool around with. So, even if you haven't played Diablo 3 in a year, like, uh, well, that's what the case was for me. Then it's probably worth just jumping in for a few hours to check out what the fuss is. Anyway, that's it for this video. If you want to support the channel and uh, check out various things you can find my patreon page link in the description along with some of my social media stuff and uh, now that that's been said thank you very much for watching i hope you enjoyed the video and i will see you next time